But there are times where I'm in a studio with Kodak, I ain't never played no beat, I'm just there. So I just say, at the right time, as long as you're consistent. I go by DJ Cam. I'm from Briar, Sunrise, Florida, to be exact. Some things I was listening to growing up, my household was more like reggae, soca, that kind of era. A little bit of hip hop here and there. And some artists I was listening to, I'd say Bob Marley. But what really influenced me was DJ Khaled. To get into music, really DJ Khaled. Putting the sounds together, like putting the actual music together, really figure out how to get it behind the scenes of just being an artist. I didn't really want to be an artist, I knew that. What they do behind the scenes of music to put music together. So that's why I took the engineering and producing rounds. Kind of learn both at the same time. Yeah, I remember my first beat. I was using FL Studio. I actually got an artist that um, hopped on it. <laughs> my first ever beat, he hopped on it. <laughs> it was lit. I was like, oh, this for real now. That's when I knew it was like for real. There was an artist named Big Fredo. He's from Deerfield. He was first time rapping at the same time too. Like when I first started making beats, he was actually just started rapping too. So he needed beats and he didn't know like his flow or anything like that. So we just got together. I told him this is my first ever beat I made and he liked it. It really wasn't that bad though too. And he hopped on it and we did a whole tape and dropped it. I was in person. I was living in Orlando for college and then I just kept coming back down to Broward and we'll just link up in the studio and I'll just playing beats and he was just choosing every one of them. Cause I actually realized it wasn't that that bad. Like I knew it wasn't too bad where I was like, nah, I can't play this for no artist. <laughs> I knew it was like, okay, it really had a little bounce to it. So why not play it? <laughs> There's a couple of them. I know Southside, Zaytoven, ATL, Jacob. There's a lot of those from um, Atlanta. I know there was a couple from Miami too. I can't remember the names now. But yeah, Southside, Zaytoven, ATL Jacob was like the main ones I was listening to. I do hear like a couple of samples. I don't really know how to make them type of beats, but I just listening to them often and then translate into rap. It's just music all over. So it's like, okay, I know how to do that. I know how to put snares together and all that. So it's kind of like the same things, just do it with rap, or just do it with a different genre. What led me to Beat Stars was I just needed to find some way to sell beats, really. I didn't really know how to like sell beats outside of like online and stuff like that, going up to people. Beat Stars has been good ever since, so I've been getting a couple views, a couple sales. People actually opening up to my Beat Stars. I say consistently uploading. I don't think any other strategy would probably work besides consistently uploading. Just take it as a regular business. The logo, have everything set up as like a real business. I'll say my biggest placement is, well, with Kodak. I sometimes, some of the beats I don't even remember making, but some beats I did pick out like, oh, I hear this song, I'm sending it to him right now. And then he did it right then and there sometimes. Sometimes I'll like stop making the beat and then come back to it months later and then remake it again and then just send it out, whatever. And it just came together a year later. He's really the talkative one, so like I grew up with him and he met his brother, John Wicks, two years before we actually met Kodak. So we was working with him at first, I was engineering him, making beats for him, and then somehow, some way, we just got through with Kodak, like through one of his peoples, and then ever since he just, been consistent there, like he's been seeing our faces more, we get in the studio more, he's been realizing what we actually do, and then just consistent, like seeing our face. Most of the times they look for beats, so they'll just ask me if I have beats, or sometimes I'll tell them like, I got beats, and then they'll like, hear some, and then I'll play, I'll go through a couple, and they'll like, actually like it, make a good song out of it, and then they'll want to hear more, and it just, Go up from there. Personally, I'll say just wait for the right moment because there'll be times where I'm in the room just engineering with an artist and I won't even bring a producer and I'll just find out they vibe in the studio like, okay, they looking for beats, okay, bring it up now, this your time. Or if they not, then just be an engineer, time gonna come soon. But there are times where I'm in the studio with Kodak, I ain't never played no beat, I'm just there. So I just say at the right time, as long as you're consistent.
I felt like it was a great deal, honestly, going through the details and everything. I feel like, oh, this is actually not bad. I know I didn't want to go through like any BS the first way out. So I was like, oh, this is actually not bad. So I read through the details. I like, I went over with my mom because she more into the like reading the details and lawyer work and stuff. So I was like, okay, it's a really good deal. I might as well just go ahead with it. more opportunities, more helpful, easier to like manage your music and just get paid, find ways to get paid.